James K. Polk won the election of 1844 on a platform of expansion, take over territory. Um, once again, you know, he, he comes up with a brilliant idea at the time that many people thought to annex uh, the Texas, Texas territory as well as the Oregon territory and then, you know, add states as you go, free state, slave state to keep the balance uh, like the South desperately wanted. Uh, so, yeah, he, his big thing was expansion. He's going to be a, a one-term president, but his legacy as president of the United States definitely is expansion. He's going to manufacture a war with Mexico, and we're going to take over a lot more territory. So, uh, as you'll see here, during his presidency, we took over the Texas Territory, the Oregon Territory, and an area called Mexican Session after the Mexican-American War. So, that's his lasting legacy in his four four short years as president. It also appears that the mullet was in uh, style in 1844, looking at that picture. You got uh, business in the front and party in the back there. Kind of looks like my hair back in the day. Polk uh, promised to lower the tariff. So the tariff was, uh, you know, still, uh, even though you had that compromise tariff in 1833, was still a thing at this time. Um, he uh, was the first president to have his photo taken. Interestingly enough, the camera came in about that time. Uh, he had ruined his health from overwork while he was in office, so he wore himself out, burned himself out, I guess you could say. Uh, three months after his term ended, he died, so he would have died in, in office had he um, went for or gained a second term. Here's his big thing, though. As president, he really, really had his eye on California. Uh, with, you know, San Francisco, the harbor there, with the whole manifest idea that people were throwing around ma uh, manifest destiny. He felt like it was his deal, right, to, to complete manifest destiny. And he's actually going to do that. Um, he, he sent a representative by the name of John Slidell to Mexico City to negotiate um, a, a deal with Mexico uh, to try to buy California. He, he was going to offer $25 million for that. This is, uh, you know, like 45 years after, or less than that, 43 years after the Louisiana purchase, we paid $15 million, so he's offering $25 million. Um, the Mexican government refused to see Slidell, and uh, that really upset Polk to the point of war, I guess you could say. Uh, so... The title of this is, uh, has a question mark in it. It says American blood on American question mark soil. Um, the, the war with Mexico is going to start. And uh, the motives for the United States have always been in question. Um, did, we, did we manufacture a war? So anyways, Polk was frustrated from the slight by Mexico uh, of Slidell, not, not being able to uh, meet with them and talk to him. He ordered, uh, in 1846, January 13th, 1846, he ordered 4,000 men under General Zachary Taylor, future president Zachary Taylor, to march um, from the Nueces River to the Rio Grande River. That was uh, a disputed area, definitely disputed area. Um, you know, me Mexico, Mexico really never recognized the United States' annexation of Texas. However, they for sure didn't want it to go all the way down to the Rio Grande River. They, they believed that that was part of their territory no matter what, and it was really a, uh, I'll say a hot spot area. Uh, Polk asked for a declaration of war from Congress, because as you know, a president cannot declare war. He has to ask for, for it from Congress, and Congress refused to give him a declaration of war. They're like, why would, why would we be fighting a war? Um, and uh, he said, the Congress told him, look, if they start it, if they fire the first shot, you'll get your declaration of war, but we're not going to start this thing. Uh, and as fate would have it, I guess, maybe or maybe not, supposedly uh, Mexico fired the first shot. We'll never know the answer to that. Highly unlikely we'll ever know who fired the first shot, but word came to Washington, D.C., that Mexico fired the first shot. So Congress did what they said they were going to do, is they gave Polk a declaration of war. So it was on. This war was on. Um, and here's an interesting you know, look at, at a young, very young 
Abraham Lincoln. He's a congressman from Illinois at the time. He was a member of the House of Representatives. And he's questioning the president publicly in speech on the floor of Congress. He said, show me the exact spot where American blood was shed on American soil. He doesn't believe Polk. He doesn't believe that Mexico fired the first shot. He believes that the United States did. And he thinks that we are the aggressor and he thinks it's an unjust war. So he said, show me the exact spot where American blood was shed on American soil. So this speech became known as the, the spot resolution. And it was, it was uh, Abraham Lincoln questioning the president. So he, he said this so many times, they began to call him Spotty Lincoln because he kept talking about the spot. Show me that spot. Um, put, question his motives. So uh, people like John C. Fremont, local, locally here, Fremont Speak here. Uh, you could see Fremont's Peak in this area, uh, named after John C. Fremont, and then Zachary Taylor's involved in this too. Winfield Scott led troops to Mexico City. Um, interestingly enough, uh, uh, California uh, was, uh, I, there was a group that went ashore at Monterey and declared Monterey the capital of California. And California became known as the Bear Flag Republic because there is a period of time, you know, between 1846 and 1850, where California is basically its own country, kind of similar to Texas. So that's why on our flag, you have the single star and it's called and the Bear Flag Republic because that's what it was called at the time. So Americans uh, went ashore there uh, in 1846. Uh, you, could, you could see here too, um, some of the battles that occurred. Um, you see Monterey here on the map up here, San Francisco, um, Mexico City. Bottom line is the war against Mexico, the Mexican-American War was very short, very short. Uh, the Americans are able to easily defeat uh, the Mexicans. You can see here's the Rio Grande River, here's the Nueces River, and this is where the original troops were sent under Zachary Taylor. This was the disputed area, as you could see this area right here. Um, the United States had annexed Texas, and they, they felt like it, it went all the way from the Rio Grande River all the way up into this territory, territory up here, which would make all of Texas. Um, so it's, if you look at the map once again, just like I told you with the Oregon Territory, it's not just Texas. It's in, a lot more than Texas is included in that. So, but the, the hot spot was right here at the Rio Grande River, and uh, that's where the whole thing started right down there. But it was a short war, and it, and it uh, resulted in a, a victory for Americans and the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago. And let's look at the terms of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago because the uh, effects of this, humongous. The effects of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago are huge. It's going to help bring on the Civil War for sure. Um, the biggest fears of taking over Texas back then, if you remember, one, upsetting Mexico to the point of war. And we just got done fighting the war with Mexico, so that what was true. And upsetting the balance between the free states and slave states with all the territory coming in uh, would cause civil war, and that's going to happen. So here's the, tr the terms of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago. One, it called for Mexico to cede or hand over 55% of its territory, which included present-day Arizona, California, New Mexico, parts of Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. And let me explain this too, is this doesn't include Texas, the Texas territory that was already in our hands, or at least we believed it was in our hands before this war started. So once again, Mex Mex this is called Mexican Cession. It's 55% of their land, not including Texas, Arizona, California, New Mexico, parts of Colorado, Nevada, and Utah. In exchange, we gave Mexico $15 million in compensation for war-related damages. And people who say we stole the, the land from Mexico say, yeah, we stole it from them. And see, uh, we, we felt bad about it. We gave them $15 million. When do you win a war and then hand over money? Usually it's the other way around. You make them pay money. So uh, people who said we stole it from Mexico say there's evidence right there. So there's $15 million we gave to them. Why? On the other hand, people who say, hey, it's, it's the law of the jungle, man. The strongest survive. Strong, you know. Darwin's theory of uh, natural selection, only the strong survive. And we just, we're just, you know, nice enough to give them $15 million. I mean, how, how gallant of us. 
to to hand over 15 million dollars right we're nice we're nice people so anyways it depends on how you look at it what lenses you're looking through uh number two part of the, the treaty of guadalupe Hidalgo. mexico was forced to recognize texas as part of the u.s right texas was officially part now that because they never really acknowledged that texas was part of the u.s and and also we forced them to say that the border was not the nueces river but it was the rio grande river and of course that is the border between texas and mexico today the rio grande and as you can see the seeds are planted for civil war i think i've told you in here before that the uh, admission of California in 1850 was the state that threw off the balance between the free states and the slave states. War is going to happen. It's inevitable. And the process was started a long time before this, but uh, it's an important part of it. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at, at the new acquisition. So under Polk's presidency, that I told you his legacy is that of expansion. We annexed Texas, this area right here in pink, we also annexed this area in peak also with the Oregon Territory. And, and then the, he wanted California, and then he sent the troops down to the Rio Grande, started the Mexican-American War. We won the Mexican-American War, and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago gave us all this territory right here. Parts of or California, Nevada, Utah, parts of Arizona, parts of New Mexico, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming. So a huge chunk of land, all right? All this taken in during Polk's uh, reign. And we'll talk later on about the la lastly in 1853, the Gadsden Purchase. The results of the war, 17 month war costing $100 million, 13,000 plus American lives lost mostly to disease and not to bullets. The new territory that was brought into the union forced the explosive issue of slavery, right? Of 1 million square miles of land if you include Texas in that. The new territories would upset the balance between the North and the South, California being the 13th, 31st state, odd number. Created two uh, popular Whig generals who ran for president, Zachary Taylor, who wins, General Winfield Scott, who loses. And then manifest destiny is realized. We do now go out from sea to shining sea after the Mexican-American War. So it has been realized. The last thing, the last slide I want to talk about here is the Wilbon, the the uh, Wilmot Proviso. Um, there's a lot of controversy with all this land coming into uh, possession of the United States now. Is it gonna be free or is it gonna be slave? Here's a classic example politically of what would happen. David Wilmot was a representative from the house um, from Pennsylvania. And David Wilmot came out and said, I wanna make a law that all, I wanna propose a law, sorry, that all territory won from Mexico must be free territory. No slavery should be allowed in that territory. And they, he created a bill, and it was known as the Wilmot Proviso. And this bill easily passed through the House because the House, the, there's more Northerners than there are Southerners. But once it got to the Senate, it got shot down. This is 1846. I just told you that California becomes the odd number state, number 31. That doesn't happen until 1850. So in 1846, when, when they proposed this law, the Wilmot Proviso, it failed in the Senate. It was tried like three or four different times. They would try to pass it, it would fail in the Senate. They knew it, but they just were trying to make a point. So yeah, that's, that's politically, you could see why Southerners desperately wanted to maintain that balance of senators so they could vote down any law that would outlaw slavery anywhere, including uh, the Mexican territory. And that's the end of chapter 17.